right so hello everyone uh, welcome to today's webinar on how you can leverage unicommerce with erp next uh, my name is nakul and i'm part of the product team at frappe and today i have ankush with us who is one of the rockstar engineers at frappe so before we start i'd like to mention a few points to maintain the hygiene uh, during the presentation i request you all to please be on mute during the presentation and if at any point you have any queries then feel free to drop them in the chat box we will take it up during the q and a's after the presentation. So as many of you will be aware that we have developed integration with various marketplaces, uh, for example, Shopify, WooCommerce, to name a few. But when a client approached us uh, for integrating with Unicommerce, Ankush took a lead on developing a full two-way integration with Unicommerce, which include item syncing, syncing of sales order, invoices, and whatnot. So for those who don't know, Unicommerce is an aggregator for e-commerce uh, platforms that allows uh, uh, you to sell through uh, many supported marketplaces. So with that, I now hand over to Ankush. Over to you, Ankush, whenever you are ready. Yeah, sure, let me just share my screen and let me know if you, once you see it. Yeah, I can see your screen. Okay. So I'll just start by introducing what this is all about. So uh, first of all, like uh, Nakul said, that we have four major integrations right now that we officially support. There is Shopify, there is WooCommerce, uh, Amazon MWS, and uh, Zenoti. So uh, three of the, these are like, uh, Zenoti is quite recent and other three are actively worked upon and still get fixes and new features over time. Uh, these are also moving from core to separate apps now. And uh, But what we have noticed in general is uh, on GitHub uh, issue page or on community forums is that people want more. Uh, mm -hmm. These four are just not enough. And uh, so what user really want is that whatever integrations you have, they want plus one. So there is N plus one integration requirement always. So even if we integrate with all these things, there is still requirement for some more. And uh, while we want to provide as many integration as we can uh, in-house as in the direct integrations it's not really feasible for us to have integration with hundreds of uh, hundreds of e-commerce platforms so when we recently uh, got some customers who are into this uh, retail where they have many many customer uh, many many e-commerce platforms they decided to use some kind of an aggregator and Unicommerce was their first choice because there are many, many e-commerce platforms supported here. This is just a screenshot of zoomed out screen for Unicommerce and this goes on and on. This is not uh, all, even all the marketplaces they support. So, and they also have this, uh, if you use Unicommerce, you probably know like they have this single unifying interface where you can access orders from all the marketplaces and fulfill it from all of them. You don't have to go to like n different sites to sell to different different marketplaces. So you have this single interface and single API, and this is why it's kind of a preferred partner. And Unicommerce is like rapidly becoming number one aggregator in India. And uh, if you uh, if you have used this, uh, one of the need that the uh, Unicommerce users have is ERP. So uh, while it is, it has buying, selling, and integrations with everything. You could be a manufacturer. You could be uh, selling outside of marketplaces. You could have B two B sales. So that uh, so it is not a full fledged ERP, and that's where we come in. So we, uh, when we integrate to Unicommerce directly, you get a uh, the full full power of ERP next plus the power of Unicommerce. That is, you can use that as your omnichannel retail mechanism. Uh, so enough selling these two things. Uh, if you if you already if you are already into this business, you understand the value of this immensely. So I'll just tell you like what are the major features that we uh, provide or this integration has. So we authenticate to Unicommerce over REST API. So this is a standard API, and it's not like any uh, done anything specifically for ERPNX or anything. So this is continue. This is this will be continue. This will continue to work for a long time because there, there are versioned APIs. Uh, then there is a multi-channel and multi-company support. So obviously the people who want to sell to different different uh, e-commerce platforms, they have multiple channels of selling and they also have multiple companies typically. So, so far our integrations like Shopify and WooCommerce don't really have multi-company support, but 
we realized it now that uh, it is often a requirement. So for this, from beginning, we added this. The next thing is item catalog sync. So to, so far, our previous integrations have been one way and over time we have added it. But for, for this one, we wanted everything to be feature complete sort of. So from day one, we have to a item sync. And uh, this, uh, I'll come to that later when I demo it, but uh, so you can just imagine like whatever we have learned so far that these are the things that are typically desired. We have made sure that it already exists here. Uh, inventory sync is uh, another feature. Here it can't be two way because there has to be single source of truth. So we assume that uh, if you want to use ERP next, then, uh, it, then ERP next has to be your source of truth because you could be selling outside of uni commerce as well. So here the inventory works, uh, inventory sync works in the way that whatever is the ERP next inventory count will be synced to uni commerce periodically. Then there is a sales order sync. So sales order sync again has to be one way, like even though we say two-way integration, this has to be one way because you are accepting orders from marketplaces and not pushing orders there. So whatever orders you receive from, let's say Flipkart, Amazon, or your marketplaces on Unicommerce, these are pulled back into ERP next. So you can see the orders live. The, then there is invoicing. So invoicing can happen either way. You can either use ERP next to invoice or you can use Unicommerce to generate invoice, but you have to, stick with one and uh, lastly if you generate invoice on erp next you need to uh, do this shipping manifest generation this is a process of uh, collating your daily shipments and generating a manifest that today you have shipped something and lastly then all the status syncing and uh, so you can generate your reports of, like, you can create pretty reports what are things that are pending and which things didn't get synced correctly or anything like you can generate reports on these things. So we keep updating the status of your orders and shipments. And, uh, and the final thing is cancellation and returns, because if you are doing B2C sales, uh, you are most certainly going to deal with returns and cancellation. So it is also handled from day one. So this was the overall summary. Uh, this integration is available and it is part of a app called e-commerce integrations. Uh, you can use Frappe Cloud Marketplace to install it. Uh, it is free as of now. And you can just uh, go to Frappe. If, if you are using Frappe Cloud, then it's very, very easy to install because it's a standard app on the marketplace. Uh, if you are self-hosted or if you manage your own infrastructure, you can just follow any other typical practice uh, like uh, bench, get app, e-commerce integration and bench install app. So it's as simple as installing any other app. After installation, there is set up requirement for each integration that we'll go through next. So now let me just start with demo of item syncing. So item syncing is almost as simple as just uh, creating a new item and just populating whatever via import or however you want to do it. And just checking, checking this tick box that I want this item to be on Unicommerce. This is done because not all the items are supposed to be on your uh, order management system. Like if you are manufacturing, you don't want your raw materials to be there on your order management system. So uh, this is how you basically enable it. And I'll just demo, uh, do a quick demo of how this can be done. And uh, so this is a Unicommerce. Uh, this is a site that I've created and it has this integration installed. Uh, the first thing you start with is you enable, go to Unicommerce setting and enable it. And it asks you some basic things like, uh, like your username, username, password, and your site. And uh, once you click on this and you save it, it will, it will query Unicommerce and like authenticate yourself. And then some authentication details are generated. You don't have to worry about this at all, but this is just using OAuth to authenticate with uh, Unicommerce and keep maintaining this authentication. So once you have done this, uh, you need to Hello, Ankush. Is it just me or is it Ankush is stuck for everyone? No, no, yeah, he's not audible. Stuck for everyone. Yeah, okay. OK, 
Okay, I've just messaged him. Uh, we'll wait for him to join again. Probably some internet issue. And Kush, if you're there. Yeah, yeah, I'm there. So I think I just lost my connection. That was the problem. So I'll, sh I'll share my screen again. And I think we were at item syncing, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So if I missed anything, let me know. But uh, so basically, I was just showing that uh, this is how uh, item sync works. You basically uh, create your item here. You populate all the details that are, and there is a documentation here that what details are getting synced with Unicommerce, but let's just show, let me just show you how it works. So I created this new item and I saved it. And uh, so what this tip, this doesn't immediately update it because you could be modifying it for a while. So what happens is uh, every hour this gets updated in Unicommerce. So we don't really have time to wait for one hour. So I'll just trigger it immediately and show you how it can work. So if I go to unique commerce, setting, there is a option. This is just for demo purposes. You don't really have to do this manually ever, but uh, like I, I just want to show it quickly. So I'm just saying that sync all the items right now. So I can see, I can show you that this works. And once it is synced, all you need to do to find it is uh, the SKU on Unicommerce will be same as your item code. But even if you don't want to go around finding it, you can just click here and say, open this item on Unicommerce. And uh, so this was just created here. Uh, I'm not sure if I can show you the activity. Yeah, if you see this 340, like just a half a minute ago, this was created and all the product details are synced. So there is SKU product name, the category, HSN code, uh, the image that we had, size, the identifier, the EAN barcode, etc. So pretty much everything that we can sync, we have tried to do it. Uh, for further custom fields, etc., we have some plans, but it is not done yet. But mostly all the standards fields are synced. And this is one-time activity. So if you have any to go ahead and change it later. You can always just do it. But let's say you are done with your item setup now. And uh, now the next thing typically is you want to push your inventory to unique commerce. So unique commerce should know how much inventory you have available. So uh, the way to do it is nothing complicated. Like whenever you increase the stock in ERP next, it will push to unique commerce that the stock has increased. Whenever you consume the same thing happens. So let me just show you by doing this. Uh, I'll just, uh, create a stock entry to quickly receive some material and see if this inventory gets synced there. And uh, this is mapped to my stores account, I think. Yeah, I'm just receiving 42 quantity at 42 rate. I received this and now again, inventory sync also happens in background. So to show you immediately, I need to trigger it like this, but you don't really have to do it. So I'll just show you if, if it got synced or not. So we'll go to product and inventory page here. On inventory, you can see all the current inventory, but I want to see the history of what the changes are made. So as of now, I don't see the change here. Mm, it's quite likely because of some failure or... Okay. Okay, this is failing for some other irrelevant reason because this is a batch inventory or for whatever. But in general, you will see, like I'll just show you the past things that I've done and uh, other items that it has worked. So here, if you see this adjusted by my name, all of these are not manually adjusted. These are all done by, these are forcefully replaced by ERP next integration and not by me. So 
this is how inventory sync works and the, whatever quantity you have in your bin in ERP next will get synced after the while. And this is configured via this inventory sync setting. Uh, you, you can choose to enable it or you might not want to enable it. But if once you enable it, you can choose a frequency after which it will sync. So ideally it's recommended to not keep it too aggressive, uh, but you can go as low as five minutes and every five minutes it will check what item inventory has changed and it will push that to unicorns. So this is how the, this is how the inventory sync works. And the next part is sales order. So multi for sales order, you first need to set up the multi company setup that we talked about. So the way you do it is on Unicommerce setting, you won't find many options here. Uh, there are some defaults to be set, but the main setup for sales order is uh, in a separate doc type called Unicommerce channel where you can create a new channel you can specify the accounts for that channel you can specify which naming series it should use and there are many other configurations you can also specify like for which company this channel is applied and if you use unicommerce you probably know that you can have the same channel repeated twice so you could have flipkart one and flipkart two both for different companies and you can like basically accept order from multiple uh, same channel but for multiple companies, multiple registered companies. So this is how you implement it. And this, all these configuration settings are separate for each channel, uh, but there are some defaults that you can set in the original setup. So I have configured this one channel and I'll just show you how you can uh, set up orders there. So uh, how, how you can set up order sync. So whenever you receive an order via any channel, Unicommerce has this unifying interface they call Uniware where all the orders are there. And uh, you receive your order here and after a while that order is uh, visible in ERP. So I'll just show you by creating a, a order that you could have received. So I'll just show some prepaid order from with. There are some custom fields that I need to just fill. So I'll just ignore this. But uh, yeah, so this is a, some customer that I'm selecting. And the address we can keep the same and I'll just pick any item that is available. And since all these items are details are populated, I'll just create an order and the order got created. So whenever you get order from your marketplaces, again, you will see the same thing. You will see that uh, order is created like this. And uh, after a while, you will see it in ERP. Next. So to, if you if you don't want to wait, we can just quickly show this in ERP Next right now. But just sync all the orders and you can go to sales order page. And you see this order was created just now. And if you open it, you see almost all the same details that are available in the in the in the Univer order. So here it's ordered for hundred rupees and it is prepared, Zivame, etc. Like all the channel details. All these details are also replicated here. The customer is created, the address is synced from that customer, the warehouse is set correctly if you have configured it. Uh, the the items are there from the from the same thing and taxes are not computed on sales order because it depends and until you invoice the taxes are not final so for sales order you will see zero but as soon as it is invoice you will see the correct taxes being shown there so the, this is about sales order and you have this other detail section here that what is the unicommerce order id and from which channel and which facility this order came and what is the current status so this also keeps getting updated so if you want to build your any kind of reporting on top of it you can use these fields to build that uh, and on order also you can just go there and see okay, which order it is uh, so after getting an order there are two ways to process this order so internally you could be doing a lot of things but ultimately we will generate an invoice so internally you could be picking the material for this item that now I'm ready to fulfill it and whatever. So the way to generate the invoice from ERP Next is you click on this. The other, the more preferred way is you keep all your order processing in your OMS. So you can generate invoice from here and I'll just show you that part. 
so this is still waiting because i don't think it has inventory yet but anyway so uh, once you have generated the invoice you will again see the same thing that uh, a sales invoice is generated and it will deduct the stock and do the accounting impact that you need so this is a already done invoice that i can show and uh, if you see here the taxes are correctly computed now since in uh, invoice has the tax details so we do all the tax computation at actuals whatever unicommerce has computed and we don't recompute this because unicommerce has the final say in that and here also on invoice also you have all these details about the invoice and the shipping package so on the invoice you can see from what was the original order number from which channel it came and if this was a cod order or what is the current pack, uh, status of this package so and this status keeps getting updated so if you have if the delivery courier partner has finally shipped it you will see that this order has been shipped same thing about about these fields also if you need uh, any kind of analytics or reports on this you can use these fields and uh, generate a report so this is how invoicing works and if you look at the if you look at the accounting ledger it will do the it will do the cost of goods sold and all the taxes and sales etc so the way you have configured it in the uh, in the in the channel setting that's how the accounts are picked and similarly the stock ledger you can also see that this one item was sold so it is updating yeah one item was sold so one quantity is deducted and balance quantity is 95 so this is how the main, the main chunk of thing works that sales order and sales invoice thinking thing after that we will come to the next part the status sync i already explained you can just uh, you can just exp, uh, see everything from there the last major chunk for the last major chunk for b2c sales is you need to handle cancellation and returns i can't really demo this right now because uh, the site i have is a demo site and not the actual order site but let's say you did receive a cancellation so so your end user cancelled something on flipkart and that cancellation reaches unicommerce and then to yapnex so in that case if the order was fully cancelled your sales order also gets cancelled so you don't really have to process it if it gets like partially cancelled we also handle that case and your items get updated that two out of three items are cancelled and you only need to ship the last one and uh, for any kind of return we create a draft credit note we don't submit it because you still need to receive return and as soon as you receive the return you can just scan it and uh, you can just scan it and submit that credit note and uh, we also maintain all this awb numbers so you don't really have to like keep remembering the finding the sales number or sales invoice or anything you you can just uh, add a list view filter and scan by the awb code so that's all from the that's it for the major features and functionalities i've covered most of the major features but there are other small things that i can't cover in this integration but if you want to in this presentation but if you want to look at them you can check out the documentation and if you find anything missing or if you have any other feature request you can raise a request in the on the github or you can tag me in community forums and i can i'll check it out so if you have any questions i'll stop my screen share and just just let me know if you have any questions yeah thank you thank you ankush so yeah now we are open to the questions i don't think there is any question in the chat box so if anyone has any question then feel free to ask i have one question uh, yeah. the inventory sync is done uh, based on the bin correct so yeah. it will also take into consideration whenever the purchase receipt will be there in your the next yeah so whenever you create a purchase receipt the bin quantity goes up and uh, when you uh, you are breaking up Uh, okay. Yep. Yep. But please continue. Yeah, I the think it's, it's the answer is yeah. 
okay so the answer is yes so whenever you create a purchase receipt the inventory goes up and it will get synced so your bin quantity and unicommerce quantity will almost always be in sync with some few minutes of delay that's the right answer Hmm. I, uh, and I, I just missed out. Uh, so, uh, the warehouses. Uh, yeah. Is, is it uh, only a specific warehouse that gets synced, or uh, we can have multiple warehouses? You can have multiple warehouses. Yeah. So uh, on Unicommerce, there are facilities that uh, that, that represent a warehouse, and so that is similar to ER Ganesh warehouse. So if you have eight facilities, you can have eight warehouses, and it will get synced like that. Uh, I have one just, question. Uh, I wait, I'll just uh, uh, explain this part a bit more. I'll share my screen. Uh, Unicommerce. I think I missed this while explaining. So whenever you set up the inventory sync, there is a there is a child table here, not just one one warehouse. So you can add more warehouses and whatever is the your Unicommerce facility code, it can have a YARPNX warehouse that is linked with it. and. Uh, and you can also specify a return warehouse. So whenever returns are received from this facility, it can go to a separate warehouse if you want. These addresses are also there if you if you want to use uh, them in invoices. And uh, yeah, that's about it. That's the answer. You can add more warehouse mapping as many times as you want. Yeah, the okay. next question. Yeah, I have one question. Uh, how about uh, the customer database syncing, a uh, contacts address? even that gets done automatically yeah it gets done for any order and uh, mm -hmm. we try our best so the next typical follow up question is like what do you do about duplicates so 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 let me just show you the sales order we just received uh, uh, this was the order and the customer did get created it uh, it also has assigned addresses but the thing is, anytime address change a little, we need to add a new address. So that's why you are saying four here. It's probably I have done this second time and uh, I modified something a bit. So addresses, phone number, whatever detail are shared by uh, your marketplace, they are synced. But in, in, in some cases, we have observed that some of the marketplaces don't even share this information because, uh, because of privacy concerns that your end supplier doesn't need to know phone number and email. So you might not get this detail at all. But if you get whatever detail from there, we maintain it. And uh, if it is a B2C customer on Unicommerce, then we maintain a direct linkage that this is, not a, this is a known customer. There is a field somewhere. I can't show it right now. It won't be here, but if, if it is a B2C customer, then there is a clear linkage maintained. And any future order will go to that same order, uh, same customer only. And for deduplication, we make sure the addresses are same. Uh, and if the address is same, we don't create a new customer. But if address changes, we don't really have any way, other way to know that if this is a really new customer or some old customer reordering things. And you can choose uh, which customer group it should belong to. So uh, if you want to filter out your B2C customer, that is also possible. And uh, another question regarding the payments, right? Uh, which are processed at Unicom, uh, that we'll have to manually enter it here in ERP. So the, the, for payment is again, another complicated bit. Uh, so right now there is provision to make payment address automatically. If you, mm -hmm. if you receive prepared order, you can, or you can keep it in draft and modify it yourself. Uh, what, whoever, whichever users we have, pitch this to, they usually choose to do it manually because this is not, uh, you are not actually billing to a specific customer. You are getting payment from your marketplace and that is usually done in bulk, like monthly or weekly. Okay. Uh, so they choose to do it, but if you want, you can enable payment entries automatically. It's up to. So in that case, the Thank customer you. is the marketplace or the customer is the end customer in sales invoice? In sales invoice, customers is the, uh, customer is the end, uh, end customer because your invoices are also made in that team. And uh, I can, again, show one more thing about it. So if you see sales invoice for them, 
so here uh, so once the invoice is synced you also get the unicommerce original invoice so this invoice you are seeing in erp next is not something that your end customer receives but they receive this so this is a shipping label and invoice so if you probably seen something like this or attached to your amazon package or something so this is the and the invoice is usually in name of the end customer only but the payments you received are not really from end customer they are from the intermediate marketplaces so it's really up to your accounts team how they want to handle this okay can you quickly uh, walk through through the other settings uh, just which were available below the uh, warehouses in the unicommerce yeah. settings grn and all. So GRN is not really useful. Uh, it's there as an experimental thing. I wouldn't suggest using it. Okay. okay. Uh, GRN, you don't really need to do it, right? Because if you are, if you are just selling via Unicommerce, you don't have to do GRN. You can just upload the inventory with the inventory thing, not do that. So it's not really useful for that in that sense. So I would suggest not, just not using it. Uh, it is useful for one thing, one very niche case where you want to update item that have batch numbers attached to it. And uh, for that reason only this was added. If you need that, then you'll probably have to use this. Okay. And that's only because right now Unicommerce doesn't have that direct inventory upload support for batch items. Okay. So if you're not, okay. Uh, anything else? Well, I guess if there are no more questions, then we can wrap up. Uh, just the last one. Uh, yeah. Nothing on the delivery note side, correct? Sorry? Uh, can you repeat no. the... Anything on the oh. delivery note side, he was asking. No, no, I, I didn't get the question. Is it delivery note or delivery note what? No, I mean, we are not syncing anything with reference to delivery note, correct? I uh, know. So uh, sales invoice has that update stock checked and uh, that does the delivery also. So, so stock and account both are updated in the single document. They are not separated. They are not separated in Unicommerce side also. So it's like identical to what Unicommerce does. Okay, fine. Any more questions? Yeah, hi, I have one question. Uh, for example, we are running one platform, Shopify, one Amazon, one other marketplace. If anything sell on over from, uh, example on the website from the Shopify, does the syncing is automatically done on the other marketplaces as well for the stock? So this is, <laughs> this is a very good question. So the, uh, and uh, like if you, if you, plan to use Unicommerce, I would highly recommend getting in touch with their team. They will explain the system that they have for this sort of thing. So uh, usually when you are selling to 10 different marketplaces, you will always get into this problem that how do I know uh, how much inventory is actually left for this order? Like if, if what if I parallelly accept multiple orders? And there are many ways people solve this. One is you have some safety stock always that you never sell the last 5% of your stock and uh, that's just a B2C practice. Like it, it could be some N% percent that you never sell. There are other things that people do. There is a, on Unicommerce, there is a uh, inventory allocation that you can say that I have 50 items available, but only allow Flipkart to buy 10 and not more than that. And all these settings are on Unicommerce and not on ERPNX, but uh, yeah, this is how Unicommerce solves this problem. Uh, if, uh, if, you, if you solve it outside of the system, then it's a bit difficult because you can't really maintain that log, like how much I have allocated to some marketplace and all that. But it, it mean, is certainly um, possible. So this means that we need to consult with the Unicommerce first about this uh, issue, right? No, no. So if you're using Unicommerce and selling via two, three channels on Unicommerce, then Unicommerce has this setting. So there is a inventory allocation settings on Unicommerce where you can define the, how each marketplace should get reference okay. and okay, great. safety shortcut.
and they also have Shopify integration. So if you want to use it Shopify via Unicommerce, that's also possible. Like it's it's better if you have less moving parts. If you have two different integrations working and maintaining them, it's obviously it's a bit more difficult. Yeah, actually, I have a uh, uh, like a physically, I have a one Shopify store. Plus, I got Amazon. Plus, I got Noon and one other marketplace. So I'm facing the difficulties of the stock level at the moment. Like we don't have enough stock. We are dealing in the sports uh, goods. So sometimes we have five pieces each. So if it's selling on the from our website and same time it's selling on from other marketplaces. So we got the you know stock level you know problems there. So I want to resolve that issue actually. So if you use Unicommerce, you have that option. Like I said, inventory allocation for each marketplace. If you do it mm -hmm. manually, I don't think ERPNX can do it for you right now because we don't really know how you are selling it, but it's it's more about process at this point where you start reserving things and start allocating fewer inventory to each marketplace so they don't create problem for other marketplaces for you. Uh, I would still like highly recommend just checking out the way Unicommerce does it. Uh, maybe you'll get an idea or, or it might be useful to you if you directly use it. What I'm doing at the moment, uh, in the Shopify, there are some, you know, plugins as well for the Amazon and from other marketplaces. So well, I had integrated those uh, plugins with the Shopify. So as soon as the order is placed, it's automatically detecting the uh, stock level and everything. But in the Shopify, you know that we don't have enough uh, uh, order syncing and you know accounts and everything so that's why we need to use the ERP for that one then from the Shopify to ERP uh, I had tried to use the uh, ERP next default you know setting but in that one same it's got some issues sometimes it's syncing sometimes it's not syncing properly so I'm not currently using that one so if we use this one unique commerce with the integration of what you have shown this one, I think it will be resolved some of the issues, most of the issues it will be resolved. But I'm think, um, uh, seeing here, there is a one small issue that syncing time, for example, you, you put it, the minimum is five minutes. And in the five minutes, if you got lots of different orders, then it, it will be give us a, uh, you know, syncing um, problem. It's not on real time, right? So this is, uh, this is a very real problem and it happens everywhere. And uh, Unicommerce, they themselves do it with uh, deal with nearly 200. I don't remember the exact number, 200 or more than that. Not all of them have this real time capability. So, Unicommerce can't claim that they will give you real time data. So, Unicommerce itself has some delay uh, in terms of what marketplace has ordered and what you see on Unicommerce. We try to be keep it minimum, but obviously, like if you do it too aggressively, you will be making too many API calls and you will start getting rate limits and all that. So, uh, it's practically, it's not possible to shorten it. And I, I think like most of our users have accepted that, that uh, uh, this can happen sometimes. And it, uh, it just has to be dealt with. It's a, it's a reality. Like you can't have real time communication with marketplaces that don't provide real time updates. They, they are planning to do it for some things. Uh, so the way, uh, for, if, for example, Shopify works with real-time communication where they send you, uh, where you can register a web webhook and they send you order detail immediately. Like in two or three seconds, you get the order on your page. And by the way, uh, if you had problem with using the integration built-in, we have updated it and it's a bit different. So you should try out the, the one that is in the separate app. Uh, oh, and anyway, like it's, it's getting a bit more into the process, which I am not that accustomed to. So, not a problem. Not a problem. Thank you very much. Yes, about. Thank you very much. Uh, there was okay. No more questions. No more questions. Yeah, then I think uh, we can wrap up. So, thank you, Ankush, and many thanks to everyone for joining us for this session. And we will continue to arrange such uh, sessions in the future. So please follow us on Frappetech, both on Twitter and we are also now on Instagram. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel, ERP Next, as the recording of this session will soon be made available there.